more time about them those days. And when he first heard he said, hi, Rebecca, call me Bob. So I'm sure if you've had a chance to meet him, he's probably said, call me Bob. And he is, without a doubt, the most well-known name in educational research and writing in the entire United States, and possibly even in the world. Um, having said that, he's also one of the most humble, down-to-earth people that I think I've ever met in my life. He really makes it possible to sit down at the table and have a conversation, even though he's way up here and I'm way down here. And he has that <laughs> remarkable ability to know everything, yet still be able to talk one on one. We are learning from the master today. The work that we will be doing is based on the 50 years of research by Bob and his many esteemed and knowledgeable co and colleagues. But now it's our task to take this and put it into brick and mortar and boots on the ground. Without further ado, thanks, Bob. Rebecca. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, the uh, <clears throat> well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And um, Rebecca had one thing wrong. I'm not up here, and she's down here. <laughs> Rebecca is our leader. And Rebecca and I have worked together for three years now. Is it's been three years, right? And uh, so we you, we, you couldn't find a better person to be principal, you know, the academy. No you want to know, she spent uh, two years almost living in Charleston, South Carolina, where the whole district was uh, undergoing a huge reform, and, and Rebecca led that. And boy, and that's a, not a district the size of Clark County, but they, I think they had like 50,000 students. I forgot how many schools. Was it? Was it? But anyway, to negotiate all of those things that are going on, it just takes a master, and she really is the master. Had a chance to meet Rashid for the first time, and the person, you know, the great, <laughs> great administrator, and Stephanie. So I think we're, you know, oh, we, you, you got a great team. Uh, I'm part of that team, I really am. Uh, and uh, you'll see Paul and I a lot. You know, I'll be here on a monthly basis, you know, for single days, multiple days, we'll interact virtually. Paul's gonna do the same thing. Uh, and I really mean it about uh, asking questions and calling. Yeah, um, I started off as a classroom teacher in 1968. Uh, and so this is, I guess, uh, I'm starting my 50th year in education. So I've done nothing but this. So I was a classroom teacher at the high school level. I actually started in 1967. I was a paraprofessional for a year in Our Avenue Elementary School in the heart, in inner city Milwaukee. Uh, so it wasn't official, but I actually had a class. So I've done nothing but education. I got into the uh, research part of our profession kind of early. Got a PhD in 1974, uh, taught at the University of Colorado, felt too removed from the classroom, worked for an R&D firm um, uh, in Denver uh, for 20 years. Started my own R&D firm called Marzano Research about nine years ago. And then started a not-for-profit, and that's what Marzano Academy is. Uh, Paul and I did two, a, a year and a half ago. Uh, so that's important, it's not-for-profit. I take no salary from the Academy. I don't, and I never will. You know, for me, this is an opportunity to put something together that uh, I think you know, needs to be put together. Uh, the bottom line goes something like this. Um, I truly, now everything in the academy, it, these are not crazy ideas. These are all ideas that have been used, they've been researched. What has not been done is to put it all together. And that's what an academy is. And so I said, I'd like, you know, my last years here, I turned 70 a little while ago, be 71 pretty soon, that's my next birthday. I said, you know, this last decade, if I have one, knock on wood, you know, I'd like it to be something where we put it all together so other people can see. Now, there are all kinds of great things to do, you know, but it's the combination of those great things that either make you or break you. And I've come to the conclusion, most schools and districts have a lot of great programs, but they actually clink into one another. And at the classroom level, you're kind of faced with this, oh my God, I gotta do this, 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 and this. So for me, it's not, we've gotta find the new perfect thing, the one thing to do. It's, we already know those one things. It's how do you put them together in a way that it works, and that's what you've got. Every piece fits with every other piece. Every piece has been tried, every piece has research behind it. What hasn't been tried, how do you put that, this together? So that's you all, okay? So, well, here's what you, we're going to find. Some things don't work. We'll make a correction. We really will. So please say, wait, wait, why are we doing this? Or look what's happening here. And that's where Paul and I will be in just trying to find out from you, from the students, how's it going, what's working, what's not working. We'll collect a lot of data, you know, not on you as a person, just how, how the organization is working. Um, the, um, the idea is that it'll be a lighthouse where the places can come and say, we like that piece, and we'll, better yet, we like the whole thing, and it's available. 
Every piece of this is available. A school could go and do it on their own and call it whatever they want. Now, I had mentioned, I was telling the story about we wanted a charter, and Paul has had a great, many years of experience in charters and setting up magnet schools. Uh, and just out of courtesy, so we, uh, we uh, Paul, uh, uh, created the applications. We were accepted by two charter granting organizations in the state of Nevada. And out of courtesy, I emailed uh, Superintendent Skorkowski. Just said, my name is Bob Marzano. Want to set up a charter. Just want to let you know, not competing. Anything we do, you know, you could use. Uh, and to my great surprise, he called back and he says, let's talk. And he's just a really great gentleman, you know, just real educator. He really is. Uh, and halfway through the conversation, he says, instead of a charter, would you be open to a partnership? I said, well, what does that look like? I said, I would need a lot of control of this school. Not in hiring and firing, but curriculum. And I said, I don't see it. He said, we'll make it happen. So, I mean, that, that's really something from a superintendent of the fifth, sixth largest you know, district in the country to say, okay, you know, we're willing to try that. Uh, uh, so, I mean, I do, kudos to him, you know, into Clark County, the central administration for allowing us to do this. So, and there'll be clunky parts there too, exactly, you know, uh, what, you know, what, uh, what's off the table, what's on the table. So, we'll solve all that stuff. I, I know we'll. People of good faith and uh, common goal. Um, so, you know about me. Uh, so, here's what I'd like to do. Today, it's going to be drinking out of a fire hose. I want to give you the whole big picture, okay? <laughs> The philosophy behind it, I've always been, uh, start with the research and the theory first and then get it down to practice. So I'll start with that. So some parts would be really boring to some of you. I'll have a good time through the whole thing, but I can't, <laughs> I can't guarantee that anybody else would. Let me give you the big picture here. This is the biggest picture. Um, it's kind of the way I think. Um, so this is a little bit history and theory, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, there are some good stories in it. That's the only thing. Uh, the, uh, uh, a, a lot of cognitive psychologists will say you, you could describe what's in a human being's mind as four systems. Knowledge system, the cognitive system, the metacognitive, and the self-system. You've heard all of those terms. You're probably familiar with all of them, except maybe that top one is, is what the heck does that mean? Uh, knowledge system. That's uh, uh, in, uh, pu public school, excuse me, K-12 schools, all schools, universities, preschool, you know, have to address these things because the human mind you know, stores and processes information within, within these four systems. Uh, within K-12 education in this country, the knowledge system, that's the stuff we're supposed to teach them, right? Math, science, reading, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Okay, now, has K-12 education focus, done a good job of focusing on increasing students' knowledge? And the answer is yes, it really has. Maybe too much. Let me explain that. You all know what I mean by standards, right? If I say the standards movement, you know what I mean, and that's across the country. Now, the standards movement has been going on for a while. One advantage, you know, of having been in education for five decades is you kind of get to see this evolution of things, you know, and things coming back and things going away and how things happen. So the standards movement is here and it's here to stay, absolutely. Here's a question, it's an honest question. There's no one right answer, so Give it your best shot. When did the standards movement start in this country? Was it an event? Was it a book? Understand my question? Mm -hmm. Just at your table, how would you answer that? When did it start? An event, a book, a legislation? You gotta turn to each other and talk on this one. 